Here's a second example where we're going to go through and find the Maclaurin series for a given function. And then we're going to go through and try to find the interval of convergence for that function. So we have two sines of 5x, all right? So um, again, what we're going to do is we're going to start by finding some derivatives of this, okay? So um, we start with n. And let's just have 0, 1, 2, 3. And we're going to have fn at x, which is just going to be the nth derivative of x. So this is going to be 2 sine of 5x. And finally, what we're going to do is we're going to find fn at 0 as we're going through and trying to find the Maclaurin series. OK, so our first derivative is going to be 2 cos of 5x times 5, OK? Because of our chain rule, or in other words, that's just going to be 10. OK. And then next is going to be negative 10 sine of 5x times another 5, or negative 50 sine of 5x. And so just making sure that everybody understands why we're going through and multiplying by five each time because of the chain rule. And then we get negative 100. Um, I'm sorry, negative 50. So we're going to multiply that by another five. So that's going to be a negative 250 cos of 5x. Right? And we're going to substitute zero back in. All right now, the trick with this is, is that notice what happens is that for the first one, we have two sine of five times zero, and that's just going to be zero. All right, because remember the sine of zero is zero. This is going to be 10 cos of five times zero, which is going to be 10 times one, because the cos of zero is one, otherwise known as five times two. All right. Um, now for the second one, or for the, um, when n equals two, this is going to be negative 50 sine of zero, which is going to be zero again. And so it looks like every time that we have a sine function, those are just going to cancel out. We're going to get zero. Um, and then when we have a cos function, that's going to be one, okay? Because we'll have cos of zero, which is one. So this is going to be negative 250. Or another way to think of that is going to be negative 125 times 2. All right. So remember, we're looking for patterns every time we do we try to do these. And we know that 125 is going to be negative 5 cubed times 2. All right. Now, the problem, remember, at the very, very beginning asks us to be able to find the first four non-zero terms. All right. So we're going to have to do a little bit more work, okay, because we've only got two non-zero terms, all right? So, um, so if we try to find the fourth derivative, that is going to be 5 times 25 is going to be um, a positive 1250 sine of 5x, all right? And we know that that one's going to be zero, okay? So I'm going to kind of draw lines here so we remember where we're at as we're doing these, okay? Um, because we are going to have to come back to these. Um, next one, the fifth derivative is going to be, we're going to multiply 1250 by 5, um, and that's going to give us, I believe, 6250. So I think that's 6250 cos of 5x, which is going to be equal to 6250. And let me verify that just to make sure. So we have our tw um, 1250, so we have 250 times five, which is 1250, all right? And I'm just using this calculator here, times another five, which is 6250, all right? Um, and of course, if we divide that by two, that's gonna be 3125, all right? So um, that's gonna be helpful for us because times two, and we know that 3125 is 5 to the fifth. Okay, so that's going to be, if we just check that, that's going to be 5 raised to the fifth power. So 5 to the fifth is 3125. 
So just keep in mind that this is going to be five to the fifth times two. Um, and then we have a sixth derivative. So we have one, two, three terms. Um, the sixth derivative, we're going to take that 6250. So 6250. We're going to multiply it by another five. And that's going to give us 31,250. So 31,250. There's going to be a negative because we're taking the derivative of sine, but that's going to be equal to zero because it's a sine, all right? And then finally, we're going to get that fourth term in our series, all right? So this is going to be um, when we multiply that 31,250 times five again, that's going to be 156,250. So that's 100. And it should be a negative, so 156,250 cos of 5x, which is going to be negative 156250, which is the same thing as two times. So if we divide that by two, 78,125. So that's going to be negative 78,125 times two. And we know, of course, everybody knows that 70, uh, 78,125 is five to the seventh power. All right. And if we don't trust it, we can just say five raised to the seventh and it's 78,125. Okay. So this is going to be five to the seventh power. All right. So keeping all this in mind, now we can go ahead and write out the first four terms that are going to be within the within the uh, McLaurin series for this. Okay, so um, now remember um, what we're going to do each time is we're just going to say that the series n equals zero to infinity is the nth derivative at zero, x to the n divided by n factorial. All right, um, and notice that the zeroth derivative and the second derivative and the fourth derivative and the sixth derivative they just give zeros, all right? So they're just zero terms. They don't contribute anything, all right? So we're really looking at the odd terms, one, three, five, and seven, right? And so for us, this is going to be, so we're gonna take the coefficients. So this is gonna be five times two times X and then minus, all right? So this is gonna be 125 times two x cubed over three factorial, okay? So again, that's because we have the third derivative here. And remember, our series is matching the nth derivative with the nth power divided by n factorial, okay? So again, that's the third term. So now we're gonna have five, and five was 3125 times two. So this is gonna be 3125 times two, x to the fifth over five factorial, and then finally, remember we got that 78,125 times two, x to the seventh divided by seven factorial. Now these are the first four terms or the first four non-zero terms that are gonna be within our McLaurin, se or McLaurin series for this, all right? Um, now we could also just think of this, another way to think about this is two times the quantity of, we're going to just factor the two out from all these terms. And that's going to be for the first term, I'm going to just say five to the first, x to the first over one factorial. Okay. So all I did was I just factored the two out. And then this is a one, a one, and then a one factorial in the denominator, just so we can see the pattern. Um, minus 125, which we already know is five to the third. So I'm just going to erase this. And that's going to be five to the third, x to the third over three factorial plus 3125. Remember, we said that was five to the fifth. Okay, so all I'm doing is I'm just rewriting these as exponentials x to the fifth over five factorial. And then minus, remember, we said that this animal was five to the seventh. Okay, so it's going to be five to the seventh, x to the seventh divided by seven factorial. And there's more terms in the series, okay? 
Um, but this is going to help us to be able to write the series for this, okay? Because remember in part B, we had to write some sort of closed summation form, okay? So if we go all the way back to the beginning, what the instructions asked for us to write a Maclaurin series using summation notation. And so this is what we're going to try to write it in, all right? Now, again, notice that only the odd terms are going to contribute to the sum. Even terms are zeros in the series, all right? So I'm going to drop this two down. I'm going to have the series n equals zero to infinity. And then I notice that I'm going to have a five to an odd power and x to an odd power and then a factorial, okay? And I'm just gonna write those in there for a second. And then notice that we have, if we're starting at zero, let's try minus one to the n, okay? And if we substitute zero back in to minus one to the n, so minus one to the zero is positive one. And then if we tried one, that would be negative one. And that looks like it's gonna match the signs, okay? So that's a way for you to check um, just plug in zero and one and see if it gives you the correct first two signs for this. All right, now, one last thing that we have to do to write the form of this series is just remember what it means for a number to be odd, okay? And so definition of odd is that if n is an integer, which it has to be because we have zero, one, two, three, four, five, um, odd numbers follow the form 2n plus one. Even numbers are gonna follow the pattern 2n. And so the closed form or the summation for this is n equals zero to infinity, five to the two n plus one, x to the two n plus one, divided by two n plus one factorial, and then minus one to the n, all right? So this is how we can write, remember the original function, probably like 10, 15 minutes ago, was two sines of five x. And so this series, is going to represent the function f of x is equal to 2 sine of 5x, right? Now, the last thing we have to do is we have to find the interval of convergence for this atom, all right? And we're going to use the ratio test because unfortunately, this is not raised to the nth power. Um, something that could be helpful is just to rewrite this series one more time as two series n equals zero to infinity, 5x to the 2n plus 1 minus 1 to the n divided by 2n plus 1 factorial, just to make it a little bit easier for us to work with. Um, these are both acceptable. They both are the same thing. It's just that I just did a little bit of algebra here because they have the same powers. All right. Now we're going to use the ratio test to find the interval of convergence. All right. So we're going to take the limit and we're going to plug in n plus one uh, back in, or k plus one in this case, or whatever we might want to do, back into this series, okay? So it's going to be the limit as n approaches infinity of the absolute value. Uh, we're going to have the two, so this is going to be two times 5x to the two n plus one plus one minus one to the n plus one divided by, oh, excuse me, we're still in the n plus one phase. So we're gonna divide all of this by quantity two n plus one plus one factorial. And we're gonna divide all that by the original series right here, which was two times five x to the two n plus one minus one to the n divided by 2n plus 1 factorial. All right, now, some good news, if anything, about this, okay? And by the way, there should be an absolute value all the way out here, all right? So don't forget that's a factorial. Um, some good news is that these twos are gonna cancel. These minus one to the n's are gonna go away because the absolute value. And so we can now rewrite this as the limit as n approaches infinity of absolute value, of 5x to the 2n plus 3 divided by 5x to the 2n plus 1 times quantity 2n plus 3 factorial. 
I'm sorry, 2n plus 1 factorial divided by 2n plus 3 factorial. And remember, for that to be convergent, it has to be less than 1. So what I did was, remember, this was 2n plus 3, but it goes in the denominator. And when we multiply by the reciprocal, this one goes back in the numerator. Right? Now we're going to cancel some stuff. And the good news is these two ends are going to cancel out. Um, and then we have 3 and 1. So this is going to work out to be the limit as n approaches infinity of the absolute value of 5x squared. Um, and then for the factorial, remember this is 2n plus 1 times 2n times 2n minus 1 all the way down to 3, 2, 1. Right? And then in the denominator, we have 2n plus 3, 2n plus 2, 2n plus 1. 2n, 2n minus 1, all the way down to 3, 2, 1. All right. And so we notice that everything in the numerator cancels out, and everything but 2n plus 3, 2n plus 2 cancels out. Okay. So this is actually a really easy radius of convergence for this one. So we have the limit as n approaches infinity of, we'll just say 25x squared. That's pretty negligible anyway, times 1 over. 2n plus 3, 2n plus 2. And that's less than 1. Well, when we substitute infinity back in, or as we take the limit as it goes to infinity, this is going to be 25x squared times 0, which is less than 1. Okay, And remember what the radius of convergence is. It asks us what values of x is this true for? OK, so what values of x is this true for? And the real answer for this is all values of x, right? Because anytime we multiply by 0, it's just going to go to 0 anyway. And so all real x, OK, well, not factorial. I'm just, I guess I'm just really excited about it. Um, so that means that the interval of convergence for this is going to be negative infinity to positive infinity, OK? All right, so that's what we're going to do to be able to find these Maclaurin series for these functions. All right, so two important things. All right, so the Maclaurin series for the function is right here. And this series is usable, in other words, is convergent for all real numbers, okay, unlike the previous one that we saw. All right, so next thing we're going to do is we're going to take a look at Taylor series, okay? So um, the, the ones that we selected for Taylor series are going to be a little bit easier than these um, McLaurin series because we're not going to find the interval of convergence for those.